Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Eternal Father, by the preaching of your word, may we be found to be in Christ with a righteousness that is not our own, but the righteousness that is obtained by faith in the power of his resurrection, that we ourselves might be brought to the resurrection from the dead. Amen. Saints of God, holy and dearly loved, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Here in France, we are limited to walking one kilometer from our home for a maximum of one hour. And so my route has changed, and now I'm finding myself walking by the cemetery every day. As I walk by it, I look and see the rows upon rows of crosses, the number of people who've been stung by death. Tuesday afternoon, I will be at the cemetery in the town just up the road for the burial of one of our dear saints in Christ. I have great compassion for the members of her family who live far away and in Germany, who can't cross borders, who can't actually be here for the interment. I feel for my brothers and sisters in Christ, my parishioners, who are grieving the loss of a longtime member, who can't get together to console one another with the promise of Christ and his forgiveness and life everlasting. And so here we are, avoiding contact with one another. Why? Because we ourselves see the sting of death to prevent more useless deaths. And that threat is always around us. We are feeling the sting of death. As I was rereading 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 to 57, I noticed that the section begins with the word when. When this corruptible body is clothed in incorruptibility and this mortal body is clothed in immortality, then will be accomplished this word of scripture. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your sting? Hell, where is your victory? It's talking about the future. This corruptible body isn't yet clothed in incorruptibility. This mortal flesh isn't yet clothed in immortality. Death has not yet been swallowed up in victory. And it continues to threaten us. So coming face to face with the threat of death, our hope is that we have a hero, a victorious champion. That really is what we celebrate at Easter. One man has conquered death. For one single man, Jesus, his corruptible body is clothed in incorruptibility. For Jesus, this mortal flesh has been clothed in immortality. Jesus has died, but he is risen in such a way that he will never again die. The body that was placed in the tomb came out by its own strength. Now, we know that in human history, there are a few cases of dead people who are and have been raised, but they were only to die again. But with Jesus, he has come to die, to conquer death one time for all. So let's ask, what was needed so that Jesus could endure the sting of death for us? It required that the immortal, infinite, uncreated, eternal God become man. He who is of the same substance with his Father, through whom all things were made, he didn't have blood to spill. He didn't have a body through which he could be put to death. But the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, has 
entered into this humanity, he has become of the same substance of that which he created. Jesus, who was only spirit before his incarnation, now has joined himself to humanity for all eternity. Jesus is perfect God, perfect man. And he became man for the sole purpose of conquering death. He has come to conquer he who had the power of death, that is, the devil. And he's accomplished it by putting to death. Death. What does that look like? Well, think about a huge bee, bigger than any one that you could ever imagine, entering into your house by an open window. This creature is huge, 30 centimeters long. It has a stinger that's like a nail. And it's evident that anybody that this creature stings will die. There's so much poison in it, you won't survive. And it starts buzzing around your head. And you swat it. One person after another, it goes to. And you do whatever you can to avoid this bee. One person dives under the kitchen table to hide. Another person runs out of the house. The children protect themselves, trying to push their brothers and sisters ahead of them. Don't sting me. Stick hi sting him instead. And the threat continues. You open all the windows. You open the doors. This bee refuses to leave. And you can do nothing about it. You are powerless because of this invader. And then Jesus comes onto the scene. And he puts himself between you and that bee. Between you, or that bee, and all the members of your family. And he's there to protect you. The bee draws near. His stinger pierces Jesus' hands and feet. It goes into his side and pierces his heart. And blood and water flow out. And the bee pulls out, but the barb remains in. The bee thinks that it is victorious, and it threatens to torment the whole family as it buzzes around. But now all of a sudden, it's only an idle threat. Because in stinging Jesus, death will die. It is only as dangerous as a common housefly now, as threatening as it might be. Its buzzing is annoying, but the real danger has passed. Paul writes, The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that is not to say that we are not touched by death. And so we have to ask, how should we rightly understand death, given that Jesus has conquered it? To quote more uh, better theologians than me, uh, let's say that there are two deaths, the little death and the big death. Now, let's be sure Jesus has taken care of both, but this division will help us to understand what's happening here. In the big death, you have eternal death. You have the wrath of God against sin. The wages of sin is death. It is hell. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, Jesus forgives you. Believe this. And by faith in him, you have a life which will never end. But as I said at the beginning of the sermon... Paul says, when? And he talks about the future. When this body, this corruptible body, is clothed in incorruptibility. When this mortal flesh is clothed in immortality. What remains is still the little death. The death of your body that is sown corruptible, but is raised incorruptible. It is sown 
in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. And it is raised in strength. If we continue this comparison of a needle, a few weeks ago I went and donated blood because there was a need. And as I was there, I was pierced twice. The first was just a little poke on the end of my finger to see if I would be eligible to be a donor. The second one was the large needle that is used to draw out the blood. When I came home from having my blood drawn and given, I realized that over the next few days, the big needle that went in my arm had meant nothing. It didn't hurt. But that little needle that was on the side of my finger, well, every time I grazed something, oh, that hurt. It stings a little bit. I felt that wound. The big needle, I didn't feel anything. When we think about what Jesus endured, he endured the big death. He endured the punishment of hell to free us from the power of sin and eternal death. It doesn't mean that we will escape the little death. But because he has dealt with the big death, we don't have anything to worry about. Christ has died and he has risen. He himself has conquered the big death. And to prove that, we see that he has also conquered the little death. For him to raise us from the dead on the last day would be as he- easy as it was for him to heal my little tip of my finger. Why? Because this corruptible body will put on incorruptibility. Because this mortal body will put on immortality. And that's hard to imagine. When we go back to that very, very first Easter, so often we don't think about the fact that it took place in a cemetery. Oh yes, we think about the fact that it was Joseph of Arimathea's tomb It was a borrowed tomb that no one had ever yet laid in, but it wasn't the only tomb there. And the women came to the cemetery to finish the burial. Later on, two of the disciples ran to the tomb and they they saw that the body was not there. And really, that's what we wait for on the last day. Jesus has conquered death, not for himself only, but for all for all of his, that we might have life. And on that last day, when he finally comes back, then we will say, where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? That day, death will be swallowed up in victory. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.